You are joining Making a Difference with Melissa Clark, a show that shares the compelling stories and voices of well-known and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Enjoy our guests. Call in or just listen to be inspired. For this show was made with you in mind. Please join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our special guests. And you can listen to our recast at www.melissaclarkshow.com. Hi, thank you so much for joining us on Making a Difference. I'm Melissa Billy Clark. We are here with Eric Valenci, who is the CEO of the successful Valenci Design. It's an interior and product design firm. They are the designers behind products such as Peloton, Soul Cycle, Rockstar Drink, W Hotels, and Ritz Carlton Palm Beach, to name a few. Eric is a IFDA award winner, which is an award for international furniture and designs. He is a contributor to publications such as the New York Times and Huffington Post. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. You're in LA. How are you? Good well. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Eric. You know, you became the CEO of Valencia at the age of 23. You've been doing this for quite a while. What has all these years taught you in this industry? Well, there's, there's been a lot of lessons for sure. Uh, I think some of the you know, ones that really stick with me are just, you know, how the world just keeps changing and evolving. And, you know, if you think about the design industry, in a lot of ways, we're sort of setting the tone for how the future looks for a lot of other industries. So that pace of change keeps moving, technology keeps getting involved. And, uh, you know, you really have to have, this is a career where there's a lot of ups and downs and a lot of adversity. And you have to believe in yourself and believe in the work and uh, hopefully it continues to trend upwards. That's right. You are totally making a difference in this world. And as an artist, as a designer, what is the process that you go through uh, in order to begin your design strategy? What are the steps that you take and where do you get your inspiration from? Those are great questions. Uh, it definitely has an interesting uh, mixture of, of different disciplines that you go through. Uh, it is part art, art, it is part science, and there definitely is a, uh, a process um, that needs to be adhered to, so you keep making pro uh, progress. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, the first thing we do is, is we start with brainstorming and mood boards and getting inspiration, which is probably one of the most important parts and one of the most fun parts. You know, how are we gonna re-examine this idea or come up with something from, from nowhere? And, uh, and then we water waterfall it down so that we're continuing to make progress, refining it, distilling it till we have a final, final product. Perfect. Beautiful. In my research with you, I came across a wonderful video that Ivy Tech uh, did on you. So you emphasize that failure is part of the job. Uh, it can get discouraging sometimes. How would you start telling someone about obstacles and what advice would you give to them not to give up? A hundred percent. Well, any creative field, whether it's acting or singing or whatever, is it's, it is it's a challenging field because most of the time you're greeted with no or adversity. There's a lot, a lot of fields where they really don't have much failure. And if they do have any failure, they're pretty much out of work. So uh, ours is different. It's a, it's a challenging road. You have to believe in yourself. You can't get discouraged. And discouragement can be a few different elements as well. It doesn't just mean a client says no. A lot of times it can, a client can say, change the color or do this. And especially for young designers, it can be challenging because they're so committed and so personalizing that experience that getting feedback from a client doesn't mean no. It means they're the client and you have to do what they say. So it's not pure, it's not art class, right? It's not just your vision. It's working together with, with the client and you know, not taking that too personally to, to have a sense of professionalism. So I think that's really important because we do care so much about our work and when someone changes it or critiques it, you can be very sensitive to it. So you have to be able to just be professional about it and not take it personally. So you encourage your team to come forth and say, because we all have different ideas. So I'm sure that you encourage that and uh, young folks should know that as well. 
A hundred percent. And I think that's one of the hardest parts about, you know, that journey from being a student to a professional career is that, you know, your feedback can be much more direct. Um, it could be a much more a competitive environment and dealing with that critique is sometimes shocking for people who have never really been in that real world situation. So, um, but people's feelings are important. And so, you know, I try to, I try to, you know, lift people up and encourage them and say, hey, I, I went through this and worse. And back then people actually didn't really care about, you know, how they phrase things. They would just, matter of fact, you know, just rip your face off. So, um, you know, dealing with that, uh, that challenge is, is a really important part of what we do. I love it so much. Thank you. Uh, you've designed some of today's most innovative in-home cycle equipment. How has fitness played a role in your life? Well, I think it's been uh, something that I've just always enjoyed uh, my whole life. I've always been active. And I think, like, you know, there's so many parallels in every creative field. And, and writing is one of them. They say, write what you know. And as a designer, if you love a, a, a specific industry like fitness, it's very easy to design for because you're a user as well. Um, you know, I think makeup has been sort of challenging for me as a guy, but, you know, fitness has been very, you know, organic and intuitive because I, I, I do enjoy sports. So fitness has been important, very important to me. Uh, it's something I just love doing. I love being active. And it's been really a blessing to be able to work uh, in a field I enjoy. The home gym has become such an important feature since the pandemic. Uh, sales skyrocketed for home gym equipment, especially types like Peloton and SoulCycle, which you designed. Uh, how did that fare your company? Was there a rush to get the best cycle design out there during this during the pandemic? It was uh, well. It's been an, a very unusual year in so many ways, yeah. and uh, you know, you were balancing so many physical uh, physical space is closing, which really impacted hotel design and, and commercial retail design and things like that. But at home, it, there's never been anything like it. It essentially took a very promising industry and made it a Goliath. And so, yeah, it's been, uh, we've been very, very busy working on at home projects um, coming out now and coming out in the fall and coming out in 2022. So uh, I think it's created something which is here to stay. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, the real world also coming back because I don't think they're competitive. I think they're just, they're complementary to each other, not in every situation. Just like working from home is totally fine. It's also nice to go to the gym. And if you don't have time, it's nice to catch that workout from your own home. Sure. I like that you're a team player. <laughs> That's a nice quality to have. Um, you look at everything when designing and especially how the product affects the environment. Uh, tell us about that and how a new designer can be mindful of that as well. Well, it's so important. And I think, you know, a good design doesn't just look good, right? And it has to hit what's the, but what's the budget allotted to the, to the project. How's the durability? Because if you design something that's beautiful and overpriced and falls apart after a week, that's not a very successful design. Sure. And so yeah. we try to take into all these different elements and the environment's a really important part of it. You want uh, sustainability. It's something that we, you know, I've believed in for since I started my career. And the nice, kind of, the nice thing is that it's become a very uh, on-trend target. People are now much more mindful in the environment as they, than they were 20 years ago. And that's a great thing. But I think being sensitive to all those things, uh, quality, you know, durability, the eco impact and how we, how we interact with these products and how our future generations are going to interact with our designs is a really important idea. And I, I always emphasize the human experience. How is this going to impact the user and how is it going to impact future generations? I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind. Sure. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we're going to be featuring Eric in Preferred Health Magazine, and we just had Ed Begley, who has a full sustainable home um, on the cover. So we're so excited to have Eric part of our Preferred Health Magazine <laughs> family. So uh, you've had a lot of success, uh, successful products. Uh, however, you told me that you are just as proud of the designs of the people who are not really publicly successful. Uh, why is it important for you to make sure that these companies have a spotlight? Well, I think that you never know if, if a project's going to be successful or not. Uh, and there's so many things that go into it. But no matter what the project is, there's a piece of myself and every other person on my team who's worked on it in, in, in it you know we, we fall in love they're all our children and we love them all 
So I think we take pride in our work and, and we want it to be successful. I think, you know, as a designer, one of the challenges is you want people to see and interact with your work. And when something doesn't get greenlit or it's, uh, you know, it just ends up not being commercially successful, um, that's just the reality of it. But some of the projects I'm most proud of, you know, are gone now. Um, and uh, they still have a lot of meaning. Uh -huh. So uh, Valinci uh, started as a furniture design company and you still work with hotels, celebrity offices as well. Uh, do you think history repeats itself uh, with decor and fashion for that matter? Because uh, you are a former model. Uh, <laughs> I had to bring that up. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, not, to, not to make no, you blush. Yeah, let's keep talking about it. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I know they definitely they're definitely uh, they definitely comes in cycles and I think you know referencing other time periods is a really inspiring part of working and maybe reinterpreting it and doing it in a new way because we constantly have new technology new materials new ways of fabricating and uh, and you take a look back and you know I think it's just, as everyone has a common sort of experience with it of you know a picture from five years ago you say what was I wearing? And then you may see a picture from your parents or grandparents from another era and be like, they look great. And then, you know, you, you can work into maybe not the entire part of that, but maybe an element of the design to, to what you're doing. So I think it's very relevant. And I think it's part of our human, our human, our humanity to look back at our past. And I think it's a fun thing to do. And, it, and it, it, while we continue to renew and change, there's nothing wrong with going backwards. It's true. I, when I buy a new product, I scrape the crap out of it and I make it so rustic looking as if it was vintage. That's just my style of my home and I really like it's that. Exactly. And I think, you know, as someone you know, who's, who's creating products and has done so for a while, yeah. you know, one of the things I love is the ability of our technology to very precisely produce things, but I miss that hand quality. I miss some of like the imperfection of you know, something old or shows age. And, uh, you know, I think that's one of the challenges that I think people are going to need to solve is as we continue down this digital and hyper 3D printed world is where is that, where are those little parts of the real world of, yeah. of the imperfection, which is not something to be, you know, to, to, to dislike. It's actually can be a very beautiful thing, that, that natural element. Yeah, authentic. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, we hear that your work that uh, you've been working with Studio Three in Chicago on a new cycle machine. Uh, what can you tell us about this design and how it differs from your other designs? Well, we, yeah, we've been working with Studio Three for a few years, uh, basically doing a variety of equipment for them—a bike. Uh, we just did a, a full body sort of uh, hit training bench, which was optimized for the way that they program their workouts. And uh, it's been great working with them because uh, they really have this incredible community they've established they have a very close connection to the people who are members and use their and use their gym. Uh, and through the pandemic that really showed because they really figured out a lot of ways to do at home and do outside workouts. So yeah. what's really fun for us is working with people who are such strong communities. Um, and yeah, we've done some some really uh, some great product that we're proud of for them that is really tailored to how they uh, exercise. And I think that's the important part of us as designers. It's not just what we think about it. It's how is the user and how is the brand that, how do they need it to perform? And ultimately we tailor it to what they need. That's awesome. So you have a lot of heart with work and you have a lot of heart outside of work. You are on the board of directors for Operation Renewed Hope Foundation, which is dedicated to ending veteran homelessness. Why does this mean so much to you, Eric? Well, homelessness has always been a really important cause for myself uh, and my family. We've always been around furniture and doing people's homes. And, you know, the idea of homelessness has always been very concerning to us, especially, you know, New York City, where I grew up, has, has a pretty big problem with it. So it's always been a cause that's been, you know, near and dear to my family, uh, as well as veterans. Uh, always been very important to us. And uh, I had to, you know, privilege of being approached to be involved with the organization. And it's really been one of the most fulfilling, uh, you know, pursuits I've done in my life, getting to work with, uh, you know, people who care so much. The organization's done incredible work. It's, it's a very tailored, targeted approach to homelessness. 
Uh, most of the organization and most of the board are veterans, uh, some even active duty today. So it's a unique, it's a unique organization. Uh, and they, they have a very, very high success rate uh, where they really, they don't just do a whole scattered approach to, um, to homelessness. They really try to make sure they're changing someone's lives and it's a hand up, not a hand out. So it's been an incredible experience and, uh, you know, it's, it's a really important cause because homelessness, uh, especially among our veteran community, is something that as a society we should, we should have. Yeah, I wish more people would listen to their stories. They're actually pretty interesting. I've, I've had the opportunity to listen to a few of them. They just want people to listen to them. That's all. I love it. Thank, thank you very much for doing that with them. It's, yeah, it's, it's, my, it's my privilege. Yeah, and you have a beautiful little boy. What would you like to teach him about work ethic? Well, I think it's the same, it's the same I, lesson that I talk about with, you know, any, whether, whether I'm teaching or with any young uh, student or young person is, again, um, you know, that is work ethic is really important. And you really can't control a lot of what happens to you in life, which you can always control, you know, you, which you're, your effort is in something and it's not always going to go well, but it's much easier to chase, to face adversity or the consequences of, not some, of something not working out if you try hard. You know, yeah. you're really trying hard for yourself and knowing that you did do everything. And, uh, you know, typically if you have that work ethic, you can get through anything in life. Are you afraid as a parent with what's going on in the world for your son's safety or the future of your, of your son? I mean, as a, as a parent, I mean, what, what are you thinking about now? I, I, think, I think every parent is concerned about their children. And I think that we face some very, very concerning issues as a country, as a planet. Um, but, you know, if you take a time machine back and look in the 60s, those were really challenging times, too. Yeah. I think my father's insight has been really critical. Um, he lived through some incredible, you know, experiences, whether it was the Cuban Missile Crisis or the Vietnam War or, you know, the, the, you know, the 60s where cities were burning and assassinations. So uh, we definitely have a lot of challenges, and, uh, but we always have, and I, I am ultimately an optimist about people and about this country. I really do believe that um, we face adversity, we overcome it, and, and we'll, we'll figure a way out. I agree with you. Positivity, a positive attitude is good. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, so much for joining us on Making a Difference, and keep doing great for this world. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Making a Difference is sponsored by Preferred Health Magazine. Please visit www.preferredhealthmagazine.com today and subscribe.